I've caught Ripley in a lie and he knows it. I've got a son knowing that we're onto his dad. And Ripley's wife? What about her? Well, have you worked out what she's hiding? This cop is trying to say I had a fight with the bloke who died, and I don't know if I did or not. Which cop is saying this? So Mike Hooley's body was moved from your flats to your arcade by someone who had keys to both. Did you have anything to do with beating Steve up? No, I didn't. But I wish I bloody well had. He got out of it on cider and laid out on the railway line. I'd know if he was the type to try and kill himself. Why are you behaving like this? My daughter, for God's sake. Not now, I'm not. I killed Mike Hooley. I sold him drugs. I beat him up. I killed him. Walk. Walk tall. Walk straight and look the world right in the eye. That's what my mama told me when I was about me high. She said, son, be a proud man and hold your head up high. Walk tall, walk straight and make the world right in the eye. All through the years that I grew up, Ma taught these things to me. But I was young and foolish then and much too blind to see. I ignored the things she said as if I'd never heard. Now I see and understand the wisdom of her words. Walk tall, walk straight, and make the world right in the eye. That's what my mama told me when I was about me high. She said, son, be a proud man and hold your head up high. Walk tall, walk straight, and make the world right in the eye. I started going places where the youngsters shouldn't go. I got to know the kind of girls it's better not to know I fell in with a bad crowd and laughed and drank with them Through the laughter mama's words would echo now and then Walk tall, walk straight and make the world right in the eye That's what my mama told me when I was about knee high She said, son, be a proud man and hold your head up high Walk tall, walk, walk straight, and make the world right in the eye. You lying, two-faced bastard. You are full of shit. You're poison. Poison. Yeah. Get out! So what was the idea, eh? Screw me so you could screw my son. I haven't screwed your son. His confession doesn't even tally with the victim's injuries. Oh, well, hardly worth screwing me at all, then, eh? When I came to see you, it was part of the investigation. But that stopped from the moment we first talked. We lay in each other's arms in that hotel room and you asked me about my family. About my son. Because I was curious about your life, like any lover would No, you are not my lover! You were just some seedy copper who fancied me. You know, you were dead on when you said that people always went for the same type because Ripley is a lying bastard too. I didn't want it to end. What else could I do? I had to lie about who I was. Right, well, so, so you were lying before you fell for me and you were lying after. Was there ever a time you weren't lying? Wait. Oh, I see. You'd even use my wife to get at me, wouldn't you? You're out of order, D.I. Carlisle. I was just assuring Mrs. Holden that Danny isn't in trouble. Well, perhaps not as much trouble as he wanted to be. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Hey, Danny came to me. If I wanted to arrest him, I could have done it last week when I picked him up for supplying speed. The boy is clearly very confused. Yeah, well, he's not the only one, Danny's is he? doing drugs. Come on, love, let's get our son on. You just leave my family alone. Oh, sorry, but I might be in the thick money. I mean, I was confessing to a murder you didn't do helping exactly. I think they're coming after you, Dad. Who's coming after me? The posse. Indian tracker and a bounty hunter. I think you killed my coolie. That Carlisle bloke, did he actually say that? Not exactly. A minor dope charge for a minor dope. Because he was trying to 
trying to protect his dad. What's so bad about that? He's going around confessing to crimes he didn't do and I didn't do. He's a bloody liability. That's your son you're talking about. He could have been charged. Carlisle wouldn't have charged him. Oh, Carlisle wouldn't, would he? You know all about him, do you? Who are you bullying now? I don't bully anybody. Tell that to Steve. What, did he tell you I beat him up? He doesn't have to. Did he tell you I beat him up? No! He doesn't have to, does he? Look at you. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. Ripley, for God's sake. Look at me, why not, eh? Look at me. What do you see here, eh? What's my name? Mr. Pony and Stabling? Mr. Ballet Lessons? Bathroom suite and girly pink. Mr. Rower machine that you hang your clothes off. Hey, home cinema with multi-channel playback. Mr. Renault, like the froggy footballer drives. Is that my name? I didn't realise you were totting it all up. I'll get Steve to pay you when I leave home. Why you... <laughs> Thank you, lucky stars, that I'm a modern parent. You don't just walk in off the street and confess unless you feel guilty. Danny Holden's confession must still mean something. I think it means that, I think. So do you think the Holden family are innocent, then? Maybe he's innocent. Who's she want? Go and see if you can win that diver's watch on the grabber. Two times in my life, I've been happy, really happy. Once in Glasgow, 1989 at some festival in the park. Summer's evening. This singer came on. It sounded exactly like Aretha Franklin with a Scottish accent. If Proust had drunk McEwen's, he'd have written about moments like that. And the other time? the other night when we made love. Even though you knew you were lying to me? Yeah, even then. What about you? I don't know, it was... like when someone turns on the lights and you realise you've been sat in the dark for hours. That is exactly how I feel. Good. Then it might give you some idea of what you're putting me through. It hurts. And you think I want to just smile and put this down to experience? But you knew everything and I only had half the story, so how will I ever know if you were for real? Well, just give me a chance to make it right. I'm already making it right. With my family. You made me realise that's where I should be looking for happiness, not from some sneaky affair in a hotel bedroom with a man who tells ten lies before breakfast. So, in a way, in the end, you did do me a favour. I need you. I need you and you need me. We'll get over it. Got your donut. Pink icing. Hundreds and thousands. I want to check the CCTV footage. I've written it all up. No, you're not listening. I want to check the CCTV footage. I want to interview Mike Hooley's fiance. I want to re-interview his mates. I want to read all the forensics reports again. I want a search warrant for Ripley Holden's house. And I want to find the taxi driver that took Ripley Holden home on the night of the arcade opening. Right, so what's the... Um... We are going to assess motive, means and opportunity. And to use the American vernacular, we are going to nail Ripley Holden's sorry ass. <laughs>